Hi, it's Ed from The Wanderer's Guide again, back with more pro tips for hikers from a professional guide with almost 40 years of hiking experience in the American West. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the GPS data we provide to make the most out of your vacation. I'll be using Long Canyon near Sedona to demonstrate the functionality of Google Earth, which is perhaps the ultimate trip planning tool for hikers. But I'll also show you how to install the data files into any hiking app, in this case using CalTopo and All Trails to demonstrate. So let's jump right into it. When you first purchase the Wanderer's Guide, you'll receive a confirmation email with a link that you can use to download both the GPS data and the companion handbook. Depending on the security settings you have, this email may get sent to your junk mail folder, so be sure to look for it there if you don't receive it right away. The download link, which is actually in a Word document called Instructions, will take you to our Google Drive, where you can see two folders, one for the GPS tracks and another for the companion handbook. The handbook has lots of pictures and is great for selecting which trails you might want to hike but it'll be of no help at all actually navigating while you're out there on the trail. For that, you want the GPS tracks. Clicking on the GPS folder reveals two more folders inside, one for KMZ files and another for GPX files. The two folders contain the exact same GPS tracks organized in the exact same way, but they are used for different programs. GPX is the most widely compatible form of GPS data. When created using a GPS device on the ground, the GPX format also saves the most raw data, including things like how many satellites the device was able to connect to and the relative strength of the signal. The KMZ format is a compressed version of KML, which was developed specifically for annotating maps. KML and KMZ are the only two file types that are compatible with Google Earth. The reason we provide compressed KMZ files is because we've included a lot of graphic icons as well as specific camera angles. This is incredibly useful for hike planning, but all that extra data also makes for large files, so the compressed version is better for transferring. It's easier to understand all that when you see it in action. So let's look at the KMZ files first. We highly recommend that you preview any hike on Google Earth before heading out. To get started, open the KMZ folder and you'll find a file for each chapter in the handbook and three more, one for important roads, another for campsites with vehicle access, and the third is the cities surrounding Sedona. You can download any of these files to your computer by right-clicking and choosing Download from the pop-up menu. The roads, campsites, and towns are small files. The chapter files, however, are a bit larger, and loading them all at once may crash Google Earth on some older computers, which is one of several reasons we've decided to divide them up into chapters like this. To install any of these files, connect to the Internet and open the desktop version of Google Earth. Next, navigate to the files that you downloaded and double-click on the file. It's literally that easy. Google Earth will automatically place the file in temporary places, you can then save it to My Places, and they'll be there every time you open Google Earth. What I do instead is keep all my GPS tracks in a folder on my desktop. That way I can delete them on Google Earth and just reload them whenever I want. Since I have a lot of GPS data, doing it this way makes Google Earth run smoother. And voila! This is what Sedona, Arizona looks like when you load all the GPS data that we provide. I know this looks like a lot of trails, and compared to anywhere else on the planet, it is, which is precisely why Sedona is referred to as Day Hiker Heaven. You can go on a different world-class hike every day of your vacation, while dining in fine restaurants and sleeping in a nice bed, getting a massage every day. That's the great thing about Sedona. One of the great things about Google Earth is it allows you to nest folders inside of folders which gives us the ability to organize the data in some really useful ways. For example, if you double-click on any of the top-level folders, the camera will zoom to a view of that entire hiking area. For demonstration purposes, I'm going to delete everything for now except Chapter 1. If we expand the folder, you'll see more folders nested inside. Double-click on any of those, and the camera will zoom to what we think is the most appropriate view for that folder. In this case, there are four nested folders labeled as System Trails, Social Trails, 
parking areas, and destinations. If we open the folder for system trails, there are two more folders inside of that, one named bike friendly and the other hiking only. One of the extremely useful things nested folders can do is show you only what you're interested in. If you came to Sedona looking for trails to ride a mountain bike, simply turn off everything else, then check this little box right here, and there are the mountain bike trails for chapter one. Click on any item in any folder, and the camera will zoom again to whatever we think is the most appropriate view. For example, if you click on a trail, it will zoom to show the full length of the trail. Or, if it's a really difficult trail, the camera may zoom to show the most difficult section. Click on a specific parking area, and you get a close-up view that shows the size of the parking area. If there's a fee to park there, it will be in parentheses next to the name of that parking area. Click on a photo location, shown by the camera icon, and Google Earth will zoom out to show you the view for that area. Or, if the photo opportunity is, say, a cave, it will zoom in to show you the exact location. For demonstration purposes, we're interested in Long Canyon, which is a system trail, and only the first mile of it is open to mountain bikes. For that reason, we put it in the hiking-only folder. How would you know to look for it there? Because the companion handbook would give you all of the information. It's in Chapter 1, it's identified as a system trail, and it says bikes are not allowed. So we go to the System Trails folder, click Hiking Only, then find Long Canyon in the alphabetical list, double-click on it, and the camera zooms to show us the full length of it. Next, we want to know where to park. The easiest way to find that out is to simply light up everything in the Parking Area folder by checking the box next to it. This allows us to see that there are three parking areas near the trailhead, none of which requires a parking pass. We can zoom in and look at the parking situation closer by clicking on any of these three. Notice that when you right-click on an item, either in the menu on the left or the icon on the screen, it brings up a dialog box that shows the GPS coordinates for that item. In this case, it is expressed in minutes and degrees. GPS coordinates can also be expressed in decimal form which is what we use in the book because, well, quite honestly, it just saves space. Either format can be copied into this search box up here. I think most hiking apps will also take either format. Next, we want to know what side hikes are available, so we open the folder for Social Trails in Chapter 1 and check the box next to the Long Canyon folder inside. That lights up all the social trails in the area. Finally, we can expand the Destination folders and, again, check the box next to Long Canyon. That lights up the things you might want to see. So this is a complete view of everything in Long Canyon, showing the system trail in red. Social trails are shown either in blue or yellow, with blue meaning that I've personally been that way. Yellow means that I've either heard about it somehow, or I can see it in the satellite photos. What I would do at this point is double-click on the trailhead parking area and fly over Long Canyon, stopping to check out the different side trails. You can do that either by clicking and dragging the screen like this, or by using these controls over here. This one tilts up and down, and also spins the camera 360 degrees. This one moves the camera forward and back. You can also use the arrows on your keyboard to do that. And this one here zooms the camera in and out. If you have a wheel mouse, you can use the wheel for that function. In Long Canyon, all the social trails lead to ruins, and there are actually 10 of them in total. Those I've personally visited will be marked with a yellow sun symbol. Those I've only heard about or seen from a distance will be marked with a red sun symbol. If you have questions about the accuracy of any track, you can always zoom in on the area in question and turn the trail off. That will allow you to see the satellite image underneath, and you should, at least in most cases, be able to identify the trail. Our GPS tracks were created using Google Earth and other sources, combined with 40 years of local hiking experience. They were not made by using a GPS device on the ground. What that means is the route may be off a bit when it crosses open slick rock or passes under thick vegetation. What I can see in the satellite images is where the trail enters something like that and then where it emerges on the other side, but I can't see exactly how it got there. In most cases, the trail will be really easy to follow if it's passing under vegetation. 
In most places where the route crosses open slick rock, locals have placed small rock piles, known as cairns, to mark the way. So you find one and then look for the next, and you keep doing that until you arrive at another section of obvious trail. Next, I'm going to show you how to get the GPS data into the Google Earth mobile app on your smartphone. You can actually use the mobile version as a hiking app, provided you have internet access. The trick to using the Google Earth mobile app is to only install a few trails at a time and install them as KML files. That will allow the app to run a lot smoother. So use the desktop version to see the routes in advance, then convert and save the trails you want to hike as KML files. To save an individual trail in Google Earth, simply right-click on the trail name in the menu on the left and select Save Place As. Google Earth only gives you two choices for what to save the file as, either KMZ or KML. For using it in the mobile app, be sure to choose KML. Once you've done that, it's super easy to get those files installed on the mobile app. Simply plug your phone into the computer where you saved the KML file, navigate to the folder you saved it in, then click and drag it over to the download folder on your phone. From there, you can disconnect the phone from the computer and navigate to the download folder you just saved in. Double-click the KML file and it works just like it did on the computer, opening the Google Earth mobile app and installing the file as a project. The 3D effect is even better in the mobile app. To use this for navigation on the trail, you just have to give the app permission to access your location and, as I mentioned, have internet access. CalTopo, which we'll discuss next, has a feature that allows you to see where you will have cell phone service in the backcountry. So let's move on to CalTopo now. This is another free navigation app developed specifically for search and rescue teams and wildland firefighters. So it has some special features that other hiking apps don't. Like Google Earth, hiking apps come in a browser-based version and a mobile app. Unlike Google Earth, you can use hiking apps without an internet connection, but you do have to have a paid account to do that. The instruction file we originally showed at the beginning of this video has links to our CalTopo maps, where we have pre-installed all eight chapters of the book. Simply copy and paste any of those links and it will open that map in the browser-based version of CalTopo. It's as easy as that, because as long as you have a registered account with CalTopo, any of the maps that you've saved in the browser version automatically sync in the mobile app as well. To find them, simply open the mobile app and click the three little lines at the upper left, then select Maps from the drop-down menu. CalTopo allows you to import and export maps in bulk. It also handles KML, KMZ, and GPX with ease, and it can convert these different file types. We separated them into chapters just to make it easier to find the trail you want. CalTopo does not allow us to nest folders, so the organization is different over here and everything is in alphabetical order. All Trails is another popular hiking app, and we want to take a moment to talk about that. It will only allow you to import one GPS track at a time, and while it says it supports a lot of different file types, it seems to prefer GPX, so we recommend using that. The easiest way to get a GPX file for an individual trail is to open the appropriate chapter in CalTopo, then click Export up here in the upper left. This will open a little dialog box. At the top, select GPX from the Format menu. Uncheck the box for All, which is right underneath the Format menu. Now simply find the trail you want in the list below and check the box next to it. You can now save this one file as a GPX. Once you have it saved, open all trails in a browser and import it there. Again, as long as you have a registered account with all trails, any maps you have saved in the browser version are also available when you log in on the mobile app. The advantage to using hiking apps rather than Google Earth is that you can navigate on the trail even when you don't have internet access. But both CalTopo and AllTrails have additional features that might make them more desirable than Google Earth in some cases. For example, AllTrails is user-driven, so you can read comments that people have left regarding the trails, which can certainly be helpful and is usually pretty current. On the other hand, CalTopo has some really cool map layers that will show you everything from vegetation cover to areas that have been burned by forest fires. 
Right over here is the layer that will show cell phone coverage. One of my favorite things about Caltopo is their trail profiles. Google Earth and other hiking apps also can give you a trail profile, but Caltopo is especially good. Simply click the trail name in the menu and it brings up this little box. Select Profile and you get this, which allows you to run the mouse over it and see elevation at any point. Select Terrain Stats and you get this, which will give you things like elevation gain and loss. Select Travel Time and you get this. Of course, all the GPS resources we've just discussed have extensive tutorial videos available online. Right here, I just want to mention that other areas covered by the Wanderer's Guide may be organized quite differently from the way Sedona is organized. For example, the database that we're building for Utah will be organized by highway rather than by canyons or hiking areas. This is what the area between Mexican Hat, Utah and Blanding, Utah looks like when all of our files are loaded into Google Earth. That's it for today. Let us know what you think in the comments below, and remember to like, subscribe, and ring that bell so that you get notified whenever we release more Pro Tips for Hikers.